Prior to being able to do this a digital performer, what they do in these Hollywood scoring stages is they have this very expensive hardware, the video is run through it, the, uh, the, the video events are superimposed over that picture. A piece of software called Oracle that runs on DOS is used to program all of these visual events. Now you don't need any of that. Now you can use Digital Performer. Digital Performer actually uses the same programming language as Oracle, and it will trigger those expensive pieces of hardware. So if you're the guy that is the Oracle operator, you can move over to Digital Performer. You don't have to run under DOS anymore. But the other thing that you see us doing here is we're superimposing these visual events over a QuickTime movie. And we can export the movie out of Digital Performer with those events embedded. So we can do all of this work before we get to the scoring stage. Or maybe we're not going to a scoring stage. Maybe it's a smaller budget, but we do want live musicians, and we want the same features that they use in the big budget Hollywood films. This is all part of Digital Performer, and these are some very strong reasons why Digital Performer is premier software for doing scoring to picture. Okay, so we've talked about live sound reinforcement. We talked a little bit about scoring to picture. Let's talk a little bit about music production. I have a, uh, an example here. And uh, this is the artist Nikki Tillman. She's on tour with Joe Cocker right now. I'm just going to play a section from the end of, of uh, one of the songs off our upcoming CD. zoom on down here. If I hold down the option key and drag, I get a magnifying glass, I zoom into this area, I'll select the area, I'll play the selection. Yeah! Okay, the singer's improvising at the end of the song. She's just laying down a couple of uh, vocal ideas, sort of uh, giving it a little bit of feeling there. What can we do to help this out? All right, what can we do to, to, to slick this vocal up a little bit? Let's take a look at the pitch view. Now we're seeing three pieces of information. We see the waveform in the background. Why do we use computers? So we can see what we're doing, right? We see the waveform in the background. The squiggly blue line in the foreground is an analysis of the actual pitch. That's what the singer actually sang. And then these yellow bars that you see are target bars. Digital Performer has made an estimation of what it thinks the singer was trying to sing, all right? And I can copy those target bars, paste them into a MIDI track, and I have audio to MIDI pitch extraction. But watch what else I could do. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on this target bar, and I'm just going to nudge it. And it snaps its position. I still have the original pitch performance, but now it's centered over the true note. And if I hold down the command key, then I turn the snapping off. If I want to do detuning, that's available too. Now you can see that the pitch line has gone red, indicating that we've made an edit. We've changed something. This is a non-destructive playback effect right in the track. This is pitch automation right in the track. Now I'm going to take my mouse cursor over that pitch, hold down the option key again, drag up, exaggerate, maybe exaggerate the, uh, the vibrato, or drag down and conform to, to the second section as well. Now you can see that there's a dip in the middle of the note and a fall off at the end of the note. That's a, a nuance or inflection that the singer was aiming for. But now I've helped the singer out a little bit by making the pitch of the sustained portion of the note nice and stable. Let's listen to that. Yeah! So now I can do intonation um, literally by syllable by syllable within the track. Maybe in the verses the singer is sliding around a lot, but that's their natural style. I want to leave that alone. But during the choruses, we've got these sustained notes. We want to set up harmonies, so we want the precision of, of intonation. And, and this will work on any monophonic audio. Maybe go fix a guitar solo or, or a saxophone solo pitch automation in the track. Now I'm going to cut one of these target bars. I've got my scissors tool. See what I did there? I cut the target bar, dragged the first half of the target bar up. We'll play this back. Yeah! And let's bring that down a notch. Yeah! Okay? So I can literally go in and rewrite the melody. And this is all non-destructive. I can make these changes at any time and decide, okay, well, let's make a copy of this track and write a harmony part, for example. All right, now what I'll do is I'll uh, make a sound bite. All right, you see option, or excuse me, command Y makes a sound bite. It's out of the way. All right, edge editing, non-destructive edge editing. <clears throat> if I take my mouse cursor over the top edge, either front or back, you see I get this hand tool. 
the time stretching and I can see exactly what I'm doing. All right, so maybe you're doing uh, uh, radio commercials uh, for a car dealership or a drug company. May not do exactly what it's advertised to do based on MSRP. Well, you, know, you ever heard that? They squash it all together. You've made your commercial. You've got a, a disclaimer that you got to stick at the end. you got four seconds to do it in. It took your vocal talent six seconds to say what you had to say. Fit it in by eye. There you go. Okay, so some music production techniques inside Digital Performer. All right, let's uh, change gears a little bit. Let's talk about virtual instruments. O2 makes a range of virtual instruments. Six different virtual instruments are included with Digital Performer. We also make the Symphonic Instrument, the MX4 Multi-Synth, and we make Mach 5 version 2. This is the next generation of our universal sampler. What makes it universal? Well, I'm going to show it running a digital performer, but it runs on Macintosh, Windows, it runs inside any sequencer that supports virtual instruments. Use Mach 5 inside of Logic and Pro Tools and Digital Performer and Cubase and Ableton Live. Use it with Finale, with Sibelius. Run it in standalone application mode. Stick it on your PowerBook and take it to the gig, and that's, that's your instrument. This is a universal plug-in sampler. It ships with 32 gigabytes of included sounds. All right, so you're getting you're getting the instrument and the sounds that come with it. What's a sampler used for? Basically, two jobs: sound playback and sound design. So, in terms of sound playback, well, we'll give you 32 gigabytes of instruments, loops, phrases to get you started. And Mach 5.2 opens all of the major commercial sample library formats, and it does it without the need for any conversion. I don't need to convert the Akai or the Contact or the EXS24 files into Mach 5 format. Mach 5.2 reads those formats directly. I can take a, a, a EMU disk or an Akai disk, copy it into my computer as an ISO disk image, and then Mach 5 just reads that disk and accesses the sounds in the native format. And of course, this is very important in terms of those sounds working the same inside of Mach 5 as they did in, in their original sampler. So if we're bringing in uh, Giga Sampler patches, you're going to get your Giga Sampler dimensions. If you're bringing in Roland sounds, you're going to get the Roland sample de-emphasis and alternate loops. In other words, uh, features that are specific to those different libraries are preserved when we import into digital performer. No conversion required. Who wants to copy a, a library full of disks? You know, or convert them rather. Just copy them onto the hard drive one at a time. Now all of your libraries are resident and available to Mach 5. There's a synthesizer built into Mach 5. I'm going to show you this in detail in a moment. Single window interface. There's a lot of samplers on the market. Why should we care about Mach 5? Well, first of all, it's the easiest to use. One window interface. Everything that you need is right there in front of you. 32 gigabytes of included samples and the ability to open all of these different file formats directly and open version. Major points for Mach 5 version 2. And then sound design. I'm going to take you through a, a, a tour of our loop lab. There's a lot of different ways to make sound and manipulate sound in Mach 5, and uh, we'll show you that in detail. All right, so let's let's actually get in there. I think I got a uh, Mach 5 down in the uh, I'm running a V rack here. What's a V rack? This is a V rack. Uh, what do I want to do? Okay, we're going to turn this over to the next one. I figured, configure the window the way I like. All right, so what's a V-Rack? A V-Rack is a special kind of a sequence chunk that is available to all of the other sequences. Let's say that I want to run virtual instruments. I've got a whole bunch of different sequences, and I want to run the same group of virtual instruments for all those different sequences. As I switch between the sequences, do I want to unload one set of instruments and reload another set of instruments? That's not very efficient. But by having a special type of sequence chunk that is always available to all of the other sequence chunks, I can load up instruments and effects that are always resident. So I've loaded Mach 5 up into VRAP. All right, and uh, tell me out, like a friend, uh, Matt LaPointe. And uh, how are you? Can we hear you? Are you on? You might have to uh, project. Be the opera singer. Hello, hello. Hold on, let me turn you up. Check, check, testing. Hello, here I am. 